right. It is Tuesday night, and after a week off, a uh, little bit of a slower night for us, but we're back with Goal Hordens and Fight Songs, uh, getting ready for the National Championship weekend and the Frozen Four. Uh, a lot of transfer news, though, still in pro signings that happened this week after a lot of teams were eliminated. I mean, the signings seem to be a little bit slow this year. I think it felt like there was a lot more going on last year, uh, even with teams still playing. Um, it just seems like it's a lot slower for whatever reason. Teams are sitting by and, and not as quick to sign guys, but there was a few that waited last year, too. Uh, still some surprises out there. Still some guys that I haven't really heard much from. Um, Corona being one of those guys, like, I don't know if he's... What the deal is with him? I think he was a senior this year, wasn't he? Uh, They're kind of interesting that he's still out there. I think um, so. St. Cl- cool. er, yeah, St. Cloud just re- announced a couple more signings. Um, but West- Western announced um, another kid play uh, transferring in the portal. Another we transferred get... out, another transfer, or one transferred in, another pro signing. Uh, lots of stuff going around. I mean, I, think, I mean, there'll still be some move here. I think the portal still has a little bit longer that players can enter. Um, I think it's is it? I think it's sixty days from like selection Sunday or something is when they can start entering, or they have sixty days from selection Sunday to enter. I believe is what it is. Okay, so they still have, you know, a month and a half left or so. Yeah, I th- something like that. Something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, uh, Magnus was a senior this year, so kind of mm-hmm. interested or interesting that he's still floating around out there. Um, nobody from Miami has signed a pro deal. Don't know what that says, but just an uh, interesting, interesting fact to throw out there for. For though for them, they did have a pretty big uh pool party into the portal. Yeah, and I do think uh I think it's kind of par for the course for them. But I do before we get into everything, I do want to bring up I think the um biggest transfer news it's out of Colorado College. Connor Mayer, uh senior defenseman. Transferred from Colorado College to Colorado College. Yeah. Just... That, um, that was a bit perplexing. I mean, I bet you there was a conversation had. I mean, I, I assume most of these guys are having conversations with the staff and not just jumping in uh, to the portal. But I think there was probably something said about, you know, we want you probably maybe we want you to be a captain or. We need you to help lead the defense core. Um, seeing as they did lose a younger defenseman, or the, a younger defenseman did enter the portal who played 11 games in Nick Schweitzer. Uh, but they really haven't had anything happen since the 22nd of March. So they, And I don't really, I think, I don't think they signed anybody from the transfer portal last year either. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, they, they've got so many guys entering the portal this year, but they had made such a point about uh, we didn't sign anybody or nobody transferred in. We didn't dip into the portal. We're doing it from our recruits and guys we wanted to be here from the beginning uh, type of thing. And, and, you know, still not a lot of movement back into Colorado College aside from Mayer deciding to uh, stick around for another year. And I think that, and we'll get into it, it's very different than some other teams using the transfer portal. Um, and also, I mean, that, that, necessity. that fifth year slash grad transfer, grad student year thing is always kind of different than a freshman who redshirted or an injury that happened or mm-hmm. uh, you went to a school because your older brother's there and you don't want to or the coach leaves or some other uh, circumstance of that nature. Uh, so it, it's interesting to see what yeah. they'll do. I mean, and I mean, Colorado College is a program that's kind of been on the rise the last couple of years. So it's 
even more kind of surprising that they had so much activity. Yeah, they're they're definitely um, even going back again. I know I've gone back to it a few times over over the course of the season. The interview that um, Bruce Siski, the UMD play-by-play announcer, did with the head coach of Colorado College, he was very prideful in the kids they were bringing in and the kids that they had stick around and trying to build build the program back up to where it had been within the WCHA. Unlike what you've seen go on at Arizona State, especially with um, is it Josh Doan? I can't remember Shane Doan's kid's name. Um, but the interview he did with bar stools showing them around uh the Arizona State facility and everything like that. And then, yeah, we're trying to build this, we're trying to build this, and he's just like, Peace out, guys. I'm I'm, gonna take I'm that, gone. I'm gonna go take that pro contract. But mm-hmm. but here's the thing though, he'll still be playing in the same arena. Exactly. He will be playing in the same arena, just different he is locker familiar. Room. And maybe it might even be the same locker room, uh, but he is familiar <laughs> with that facility right now. He might be the most familiar with that facility as far as the uh, Arizona Coyotes are concerned. Yeah, because he has one more year of experience playing in that arena. Um, it's like the guys that get traded from the Jets to the Giants or signed vice versa, you know, free agency. They just pick up their shit and move it down the hall. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I think we can probably get into it because there are some guys that have. There's a couple of that entered to, uh, there's a couple, we'll go portal news first. There's a couple guys that jumped in today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Owen Ozar freshman, I don't know, sophomore forward played 27 games, had six points for Denver. He jumped in the portal today. Denver still hasn't had anybody commit out of the portal, at least as reported by the rink live. Uh, Because I use their Google Doc because it is the most up to date usually and has the best information on it. So you want to know where I'm getting my information from? I'm taking it from them. Yep, and that's what I have up right now too on my phone. And I believe this one is the one that um, Sydney Wolf is in charge of, and the amount of effort she puts into all the stuff she puts out is absolutely incredible. She's a great source for hockey news at really any level. I mean. Minnesota high school through college even hits the pros here and there with, with information Um, covers both men's and women's. She is, she is everything hockey and not just college hockey. So shout out to her and what she puts into the the hockey world. Yeah. The, the rink live is just great in, in general with what they do as far as any hockey news. Small, the small schools, and I mean, they're very heavy on Minnesota high school hockey, but the smallest schools up to the pros, like you said, they, they do a great job in covering everything hockey. Uh, Miami seems to have stopped some of the bleeding into the portal. They've not had anyone new join since March 28th, which was Nick Donato. Uh, they have signed two commits. Or they have picked up two commits at coming to Miami from the portal. Uh, Long Island player Spencer Cox, who I believe we mentioned last time. Mm-hmm. And for junior forward Ryan Sullivan from Massachusetts. So a couple of East Coast guys coming to, to the Midwest to, to join that team. And, I mean, they really need all the help they can get because they at lost, point, they they lost some big warm, games. They just need warm bodies at this point. That I mean... I, I think, yeah, I still got at least a year of college eligibility left. Um, and I think you have nothing. Well, you didn't play sports, so. No, but I was at Western long enough and I am too <laughs> old and I have. I mean, granted, there's a lot of college athletes that have children, but I have a child that I enjoy spending time with, even though I am hey, not right now. Well, we'll just put you in front of the net. You, you'll provide a you'll provide a screen. If I could stand up on skates for longer than two seconds without my feet deciding that the world is against me, I would potentially just stand in front of a net and let people hit me with pucks, okay? I'm not the smartest. Oh, we all knew that. Uh, well, let's see. Transfer news for Duluth. You guys have really kind of done nothing in the portal. You had two guys jump in. 
uh, that it seemed like they kind of knew where they were going when they entered because they were quick to commit. Uh, Isaac mm-hmm. Howard committed to Michigan State, and Luke Mylock. Where is Howard going to pretend that Mal-Muck. is? Malmock. Mel. All right, sure. Why Mal-Muck. not? Yeah, yeah. That one. Those words. Uh, he transfers to Niagara. So, and that um, you and I talked about this this past week. Um, Scott Sandlin went on public record saying they were the only two that were going to transfer. Yeah. Um, and that we don't have anybody else going. Um, obviously you've had some guys sign pro deals, but they were, uh, and we've talked about them already. Um, juniors and seniors that really probably weren't going to come back anyway. Uh, so that makes me feel a lot better about the team going forward next year, only having these two move forward. Um, Howard, I think he could have played a, a big role next year, but he just didn't want to be at UMD, which is fine. And Michigan State does seem to be picking up quite a few of former U.S. development team guys. I think with their new coaching staff who had ties to that team too, they seem to be putting the band back together. They also pick up Red Savage from Miami, who was a part of that that crew too, so... Interesting to see what they're going to look like next year in the Big Ten. Uh, had a little bit better this year, but still not quite what those fans are used to as far as productive years after year. Uh, Omaha had a couple in or a couple out. One stays much like uh, Miami. They have one player stay in the conference. Cameron Berg signs with North Dakota. For after his sophomore year at Omaha, so he has at least two, maybe three years left there that he could play mm-hmm. with North Dakota. Uh, they do get Seth Isley, a goaltender, a senior goaltender from Lake Superior State. So they're going the senior goalie route, which I don't really know that that was a need with Lacozzi kind of taking over the net. So he, maybe he's just going to serve as a backup. They they did lose senior goaltender uh, Jake Kacharski, so who knows what they're kind of really thinking in Omaha. Yeah, and I don't I don't know what Seth was necessarily thinking. I mean, he he was a senior. He's gonna play yeah, his fifth, fifth year. year. You know, maybe he just wants to be part of that team. Like Cozy definitely has that net to himself. Um, but maybe he'll get some playing time here, there, maybe just, you know, the grad program that he wanted was at Omaha and it just seemed like a good fit team that had a fairly decent year. Um, and just a team that had a better year than Lake Superior state because they, they're kind of, I would put them as kind of like an Omaha of the CCHA and previous WCHA. From from what I know of them. I am struggling to just smack and everything over here. It's twice now. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe he's looking for a better competition. Maybe he just knows that this is going to be his last year playing hockey. He wants to just make sure he gets something. Uh, because he did struggle from time to time, so maybe there is an opportunity to, to fill in games here or to, you know, battle a little bit and come in and, and maybe steal, steal the spot if you practice well and play uh, hard. In over you know the summer and compete, show you want the job. Is North Dakota the most interesting team off season so far? At least the past. As three far as years. as far as what they're doing with the the transfer portal in North Dakota, I, dude, they've lost the pan. They've lost their entire decor either to pro signings or to the transfer portal. Uh, luckily, they did pick up senior defenseman. Garrett Pike transferring in from Alaska, but they they also lose sophomore goaltender Jacob Helston. They do mm-hmm. they do pick up junior goaltender Ludwig Pearson, which great, but you gotta have a defense in front of him. I I I think, and they get Cameron I, Berg from Omaha. So, for, yeah, from Omaha. So two in-conference transfers and a guy from Alaska maybe hoping to make the tournament on a team that can make the tournament because they don't have to stack their schedule to have a shot. 
Right. They don't have to get the independent. I don't. I mean, but, I guess that's maybe what Ludwig is thinking, but. But there's no like he's. It, what does he have? We we have no idea what that defense is going to look like in North Dakota. And yeah, they were he, so he, inconsistent last year. He He's going from a team that had no defense to a team that has no defense. He went from a team that figuratively had no defense to a team that literally has no defense right now. I. I don't know if it's the <laughs> name. I, I don't. That one is very, very confusing to me. I mean, he's he's a great goalie. Let's let's not play games like he has faced yeah, yeah. some high number shots. He has made some incredible saves through his time at Miami. He kept Miami in a lot of games they probably didn't deserve to be in. But that is an interesting choice considering everything that was happening. Even like I want to know what that recruitment was like. Like, hey, bro, listen, we know <laughs> the entire decor just transferred out of here, but it's gonna be fine. Like, do you see? Do you see this incredible arena that we get to just practice in and play in? And like, you you've see all you've played, in, you've heard all those fans cheer against you. Now they're gonna cheer for you. I don't know why or how much they're gonna have to cheer about. I mean, North Dakota is an interesting place this this off season. It, and I've I've been thinking about this. Um especially the last couple weeks with the transfer portal and everything, how much they're using it and, and losing with it. How safe is coach Barry's job in, in a, in a sense, because they, he started to almost do. It's obviously different because with like, um, Kentucky in, in college basketball, they're kind of one and done. You kids come in, they play a year, they get their freshman year of college out, and then they go to the NBA. Yeah. North Dakota is. There's something going on there that is, especially with the transfer portal, that's causing so many kids to leave but it's also the name that's bringing them in, but it worked for a couple years, but this last year it's not, it, it didn't work. No, I mean, two years ago was, so was the year that they had like 14 new kids and it was like 10 were transfers and only four incoming freshmen. But like that kind of reliance on the transfer portal also has to hurt your recruiting at some point. Like you've got to have freshman dudes who are just like, I'm supposed to come in and, take playing time, but you've got a fifth year senior who's taking my spot. Like, where do I go now? I mean, I'll come because I'm committed and I'll sit my freshman year, but I'm out as soon as that year's over. Cause you kind of screwed me. Well, and, and that even it, it goes to it where it hurts the recruiting. When you see so many guys, they have what one, two, three, they have five sophomores that leave. Oh dude, they're like entire sophomore classes out. Like what, what does that say about your program? And, and the coaching staff and, and everybody there where they did their freshman year. They thought it was going to get better their sophomore year. It didn't. So they said, peace out. We're gone. We, we're going to go find someplace where we're actually wanted. Now you have kids that are being recruited. I mean, they, they got to have the best salesman ever and we should hire them for my company because if you, they can get these freshmen to come there. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe North Dakota plays the NIL deal. Uh, maybe they're the Alabama of college hockey with their NIL deals. I don't know. I mean, that's the only, it's really the only game in town. You know, the, the, the football program is like D2 or something, uh, if not lower. They're, FC, they're FCS. So, yeah. So, but they're so D1, with- but... So yeah, low, it's but slightly below the subdivision. They're yeah. and they're competing with NDSU and Fargo for that. It, I mean, they're it's the NIL, but hey, maybe that's what's drawing people in. But and then at some point they're just like, man, it's not worth it. We're not getting playing time. We're not. I mean, I mean, uh, quite a few of these kids though did play 
quite a few games. You know, uh, Constantini played 25 games. Ports played 27. Bast played mm-hmm. 13. Helston played 13. Uh, yeah, 13 Johnson played goalie. 13. Cooper Miller played 31 last year. Like, I mean, these are some guys who are seeing ice time. Maybe they just didn't weren't expecting the struggle. And I mean, Helston, his save percentage wasn't great at an eight seven five, but his goals against wasn't horrible. It was two seven two. Yeah, I mean, that was so, he was also kind of playing when they were in that weird. We don't know what we're doing. Let's have a thirteen goal game against Western too. I mean. So their whole season, they didn't know what they were doing. Pretty much. I mean, I, they are the weirdest team to try and figure out. And I just like, um, I don't even remember who the Miami coach is right now, but um, Brad Berry, I don't know if his job is safe because I think they're going to give him one more year. But if they have a transfer portal like this, and and then a, a season end like it was this year. I don't know if you can keep him around. I, I mean, I the really only thing don't. maybe the only thing that benefits him is he made it back to Minnesota. He made it back to St. Paul for. He had a chance at winning the the frozen faceoff. I mean, not much of a chance, but he had one because they mm-hmm. made it through Nebraska and they played a team that they had known pretty well in St. Cloud. But yeah, I mean, that's one of those places where. If you're not winning, they they don't seem to really want you around. I mean, we necessarily haven't seen them struggle much, if ever, though. So it's hard to say that it's really a hot seat. Uh, Because, I mean, Hextall, he didn't have a down year. He just left because an opportunity came at the NHL. And he wanted to dip out. And that's... And that's really kind of the only only place that comes knocking that you might give up a job like North Dakota for. Because, again, North Dakota for hockey is really kind of the Alabama. Like, the coaches make a ton of money. You're you're the biggest thing there. It's everyone wants to go there. They don't necessarily win the same amount of titles as, you know, Alabama does in football. But they, they have a record of national championships. They have a record. They have a pipeline to Ottawa for whatever reason. As Ottawa's got <laughs> yeah. freaking five guys from the last like four years that played at North Dakota in their lineup yesterday or a couple of days ago, all playing at, in the NHL. So, well, apparently Chicago has a pipeline to UMD, but that that does bring up a question though. Too is I can't remember exactly when Brad got to North Dakota, but it's so Hackstall had his pipeline and and his team he was there for a good I good think, group of years if i remember right last year within the last couple of years either last year or the year before was the first was the last year of a hextall recruited player so it's only been a couple yeah. of years where barry has these have been 100% barry head coach guys or they're signing because of recruited, barry's as, yeah. associate coaches or something I think this is the second year, but it, it kind of, you think about it. He won a national, Barry won a national championship with Hextall guys. Yeah, exactly. And now you're getting into that realm of <laughs> is, is it him? Because you, and but, you look, but are we, cause how many of those guys that he recruited are now transferring out and he's got to recruit guys from the transfer portal. Well, well, that's what I'm saying too. It like that doesn't help his case, and you, you then look at um, the University of Minnesota and what Bob Motzko has done. It took him, a, you know, he's in his fifth or sixth year at the University of Minnesota, and that's about what I figured it would take him. He went through his Don Lucia guys, and they didn't do so well. And now they're arguably the best team in the country and for for what he's done. So you you have to look at it like that, where okay, yeah, you, you had success and you're making a shit ton of money. But you were riding the colt tails of the previous coach who had also won national championships and the NHL came calling and well, he decided to go to the Flyers, and now um, he's with Seattle. 
it's the the trajectories are one's going down one's going up and i i don't think i think it's becoming a hot seat and especially with a program that is so used to winning um six is not acceptable to them no and i if they have one more bad year grand forks is gonna riot because they they are they do not accept losing yeah i mean it's it it doesn't i mean unless you can turn it around this year and it's it's just a one year slip or something but i mean last year they they didn't even make it to same no they did make it they've lost two years in the semifinals now mm-hmm. they lost to western last year and st cloud this year i think both times going through no we played in nebraska so never mind uh but they they kind of struggled a little bit against colorado college they were close games in the semifinals we struggled against think- colorado college so colorado college is a hard out in the playoffs don't let them yeah, fool you. Are. But I mean, yeah, they they've got to figure something out because this was definitely not the North Dakota team that we're used to seeing, and their off season is once again one of the weirder ones. Um, but St. Cloud, they only have a couple guys in who joined recently: Chase Brand, a uh, senior guy. So you know he's looking just for that one last year somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's a major issue. I don't know. Uh, young guys are coming in there. They want them to get some ice time, but uh, Chase Brand and Brady Zimmer, 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 depends on... I, I would go with Zimmer. I don't know. Depends on where you're from. Uh, I've heard it both ways. Yeah. Junior defenseman, he is transferred to Augustina. Okay. Now that one you can't screw up. Augustana. I've There's heard it both no ways. There's no I in there. I've heard it both ways. There, There is no I in there. I've heard it both ways. Augustana and they're... Augustana. I think I mean they're looking they're year, looking to build a program. I think I want to say next year is their first year, isn't it? That, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think next year is their first year. So, I saw that one uh today and I thought, you know, good for them and good for Brady. He he's going to get a chance to be a leader. And actually, I think that shows a little bit of character on his part that he wants to take on that role of of being a leader and help build a program um whether he continues on with hockey uh or not it it just shows character for him as a as a person uh so hopefully that works well for him and well shoot you get uh you get a kid from St. Cloud State that helps your recruiting too like hey I want to play here Sioux Falls is a pretty good uh pretty good place I don't know if they're going to play I don't know if they're building an arena. I think they are. I think but maybe they are. while that's in progress, they're um they can play at the the Denny Sanford Center, which is uh home to the Sioux Falls Stampede, I want to say the USHL team that's there. I know there's a USHL team in Sioux Falls, um, mm. and it's a great arena, and I will be there in May watching. Kenny Chesney, but um, yeah, good for them. And then Western finally has a player enter the transfer portal who actually saw some ice time last year. Another freshman, Lucas Mata. Uh, he came in, played defense when Carter Berger was out uh, near the end of the season. I mean, yeah, three freshmen and a sophomore. Only one guy really saw ice time last year. Guys just looking for ice time. I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, Barrett Brooks is trans is uh, committed to Mercyhurst for next year. We do also pick up junior forward Sam Colangelo. Is how we're gonna say that he transfers from Northeastern. So not that we really noticed him because we weren't necessarily there to watch him, but we did have eyes on him in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, that we did. But I was more concerned with uh, Derek Levi. Or yeah, is it Derek? With Levi and then the Western kids. Um, I don't care what his first name is anymore. All that matters is his name. Last name was Levi. Uh, because he we Levi was in front of us for two of the three periods, and we were watching Western put pucks on him. Uh, Devin. Devin. I knew there was a D. All right. It's all about the D. Um. Oh. But that actually. Um. Your transfers 
don't mean as much as the signings. And I actually think that's a, a good transition uh, to the guys that you've lost to pro signings. I was going to say, yeah, Western's lost a lot more to pro signings this year. Uh, three, yeah, three underclassmen. We've lost one from every class. We lost a freshman. We lost a sophomore. We lost a junior. We lost a four-year senior, a five-year senior who aged out, so that doesn't really count. But just one from every class, because we'll start with Western here into the signings as I have it up. Uh, some of them have already hit the ice at the pro level. Most recently announced freshman Ryan McAllister. He's done at Western after one year. He signs a three-year entry-level deal with the Florida Panthers. I did not see whether or not he was on a ATO PTO tryout for the remainder of the AHL season or not. I'm assuming he he may not be. Uh, everyone else kind of went that route with their their deals. Um, Let's see if I can find that. But I did not see any mention of him playing with an AHL team for this year. Cole Gallant joins the Three River Lions of the ECHL. He's already got two goals and an assist in the four games he's played. Uh, Ryan did sign a PTO, and he's playing with the Charlotte Checkers. Oh, right. That was new news then. So he'll be... I don't yeah, think that was just... an app of an hour ago. Oh, well, good. I just didn't double-check that. Um, Jason Poland has an assist with the... AHL Colorado Eagles, he begins his one-year two-way contract with the Avalanche next season. Interesting that he only got signed to a one-year. Maybe it's just because he was a senior uh, or something, but weird that they only wanted to do a one-year two-way deal with him. He was our fourth-year senior who signed. Uh, Cole was the fifth-year senior grad student aged player. Aiden Fulp. Junior defenseman, he signs, I believe, a two-year deal with the Islanders, is currently with the Bridgeport Islanders, has yet to suit up for them, though. And then sophomore Max Sasson signs with the Vancouver Canucks for, I think his might have been a two-year, too. But he's on a ATO for the remainder of the season with the Abbotsford Canucks and has played two games with them. But he joins that organi- an organization that already has a Western player in uh, Sheldon Dries, who was a three-year captain at Western. So hopefully those guys can connect and talk, reminisce about their time in the zoo and their time in front of the lunatics and, and work some Western magic up there in the Northwest. Where would you like to go now, sir? Oh. Uh... And eh, reverse alphabetical order. Okay, yeah, you yeah. got I was, it. I was, I was going to say, let's go Let's go reverse. St. Cloud State. Uh, Grant Crookshank. These two just came out today. Uh, Grant Crookshank signs with the Marley, the Toronto Marlies of the AHL. And Yami Cronulla signs with the Penguins uh, from Wilkes-Barre Scranton in the AHL. So a couple AHL deals for some older, I believe, Cronulla, or Crookshank, I believe, was a senior Maybe a fifth year player. Been, I think I think he was a fifth year. Because he played. I think he played three at CC. He, then he played last one year, at Minnesota. Minnesota, and, and then, then he was at Saint Cloud. Cloud this year. Yeah. Okay. And Cronulla, I think, was a senior. Senior or a junior? I'm not sure which. Uh, not and then a couple guys who have already seen the ice here in Kalamazoo. Our Aiden Spellacy, whose name got absolutely butchered by the Kalamazoo play-by-play guy. I think it was the Kalamazoo oh. play-by-play guy. I butcher some names, but I'm at least in the ballpark. He was ballpark adjacent. All right. Can I stop it, hitting things? It, it it can't be worse than uh, Ooh, a, dude. Little league, a little league baseball game that I had. I had four. Or I was man, kind of little league. I mean, everybody messes up I, names. I, even even the great Dave Starman could not say McCown when he was calling that CC. Who was it? CC. Oh, who was that game? Was it CC North Dakota? Or is it CC Denver? One of the two. Either way, Denver. 
he was struggling to say McCowan. It kept coming out like McCowan. Like, no, there's. Well, see, the thing is, I have three letters in my last name. Yeah, going but you, up at least to bat, a, you at least have a vowel. Going up to bat, well, McCowan has a vowel, too. Oh, I'm talking about but... three letter names like Firk. F R K. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I had uh, going up to bat, three letter last name. Four at bats. Not one of the times was it actually correct. The guy <laughs> said my name wrong four times. So I have a last um, name that's easily don't feel that bad. And then uh, him, he brings along a teammate, Brandon Bushy, to the Kalamazoo Wings. And Spellacy already has a goal in his the three games he's played here. Bushy also playing three for Kalamazoo, so. The St. Cloud Huskies getting right to work in in the pro ranks. Not not really a surprise, especially with those experienced guys. Yeah, uh, getting to it. Couple guys out of Nebraska Omaha. This list is not complete because I literally put it together today on scrolling through Twitter feeds. So if there's somebody missing, I apologize. You're much cooler than me. You play professional hockey. I pretend to talk about it on the internet. Okay, cool. We, we got that I, figured I out. Will say, I'm also a 33 year old dude who paints his face for college hockey games. So you've got me be in numerous ways. All right. And I'm going through the hockey news feed and I, I'm just going to say their website is terrible. And that, that link and everything, it, it is unusable. That, that is I'm part sorry. of I, I'm sorry, but if you are titled the college hockey news, it is. Part of the reason why the I was news. why I was yeah, scrolling through uh, NCHC teams Twitter feeds today, but yeah, from bad. Nebraska Omaha we got Johnny Tyconic, who signed with the Marlies has already played five games with the Toronto Marlies has two points on a goal and an assist, and Jake Kacharski who signed with the AHL Chicago Wolves he has one loss to hit in the one game he played putting up a 0.5 per save percentage and a 17.98 goals against average. Uh, not a good start to the pro career there in Chicago. But as you and I have seen, the Chicago Wolves struggle sometimes. Just a little bit. So that might be Just a tough a that might be a tough situation to be in no matter what. Uh we've kind of over- Oh, that's that's right, Tyconic. I, I was like, I, I know that name. I know that name. He did play two years at uh, North Dakota. Yeah, he was an in-conference right. transfer. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of North Dakota, great segue, because that's who's up next. Look at that. Uh, Judd Caulfield just, I believe, signed his deal today or yesterday. He has not pl- made a debut yet. His rights were traded from Pittsburgh to Anaheim, and, and then Anaheim ended up signing him to a two-year deal, I believe. Uh, so he will not be back in Grand Forks, so they lose another guy. They also lose defenseman Tyler Clevin, which might be for the safety of the rest of the conference, and as well yeah, as possibly for him. Mm, I mean... I don't know if it's for the safety of him... I mean, maybe, maybe he'll hit, on... maybe he'll hit the wrong guy, and then he'll get known like, "Hey, we don't do that here," and then he'll like, "All right, cool, I need to settle down a little bit." Thank, thank God we don't play, but he Ottawa play... again because if if he did that and Ryan Reeves is on the ice, yeah, that's not going to be a good time. Well, he plays for the Ottawa Fighting Hawks. I mean, the North Dakota Senators. I mean, damn it, the Ottawa Senators of the NHL. Uh, that was all done on purpose. So suck it. Uh, he's played three games, has two assists. I mean, th- there's like five guys from North Dakota that play there, right? It's there a, are. There are. Well crafted joke. It just wasn't funny, but it was well crafted. Such a dad. I mean, I'm only like two months into this, but I'm coming out hot. Uh, <laughs> Minnesota Duluth. Talked about one already, Wyatt Kaiser. He signs with the NHL Blackhawks. He's got an assist in five games played. Uh, Jesse Jacks, who we've also mentioned, he plays for the Iowa Heartlanders. 
Three goals, one assist for four points through six games. Tanner Landeru, one goal, two assists for three points in six games. And Derek Dashke signed with the Toledo Walleye. He's got one goal, four assists for five points in six games. What the so. hell? He's doing a lot more in uh, Toledo than he did all year with us. Well, Toledo as as might offense. be a better team than Minnesota Duluth was this year. As as far as offense goes, he was he was great defensively for us. Yeah. So there. Uh, Miami, nothing to report there. Sorry, Miami. I, I don't even have a joke to be mean to you about. It's just meh. They I'm get the f- participation award. But they don't because they don't have anyone participating. No, for the for the conference. Oh yeah, but we're talking about pro signings. Yeah. Well, guys they... participating in other leagues. I mean, they've got guys participating in other conferences now because they've transferred out. Anyway, exactly. that's enough being mean to Miami. We weren't, we weren't gonna do that, Michael. That's too easy though. Oh, Denver. They've, uh, I believe he, Casey Dornbeck might have just signed today, but he signs to the Iowa Wild, potentially on a tryout basis. I don't remember if that was where he signed or if that was a two year deal or a two way deal that he's just, that starts next year and he's playing out. Carter Mazur signs with the Red Wings. He's already debuted with the Grand Rapids Griffins and has an assist in three games. Justin Lee signed with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. He's played two games there. And Kyle Mayhew signed with the AHL Eagles of Colorado, but I believe he is actually in the ECHL, if I remember right. And I just forgot to write it down because I'm a boob. But yeah, that's the Denver signings. Kind of, like I said, a little bit fewer than I would expect considering that they've had two pretty solid years back to back Penrose Cups yeah um they did get bumped in the the semifinals in back to back years national championship last year did not make it to the frozen four this year but didn't I mean, even make it out of the first round this year but you know i mean well you can't win them all yeah win them all we win a bunch of them and we've already done that Colorado College will wrap us up here. Hunter McCown. Hey, we mentioned him earlier. He signs with the Blue Jackets. He has a, an assist through six games. And Matt Vernon, who had previously entered the transfer portal, decides to forego a fifth season and instead signs with the Reading Royals of the ECHL. And he's got one loss, one tie in two games played, a .904 save percentage and a 2-4 goals against average. So not terrible. No, not too bad. A uh, friend of the show news, Trevor Gorsuch, who has been on our podcast three official times, four technically, just one belongs in the has, ether. Exists yeah, one's, in, one's the, in the ether. One's in the universe. It was there. We got to talk to him. It was fun. Uh, he signs with the Wichita Thunder, one of two Thunder teams in the ECHL, which we have learned today. Um, kind of really makes you think about that whole like issue that Las Vegas was having with you can't have this many teams with the same name. Like, dude, there's two teams in, in the same league with the same name. Okay, or you know, Canada. How many teams are named the Rough Riders in Canada? All of them. Yeah, they didn't even have Teddy Roosevelt as their president. What? I mean, come on. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, he signs with his fourth ECHL team of the season. He is a traveling man. We love him. <laughs> but we, he is a friend of the show. He is a great dude. But he is a traveler. Uh, is a journeyman if I've ever seen one. And we hope to get him back on the show maybe twice this off season. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with the show, and and me playing him because his team is a lot better than mine right now. Well, that's because mine were gonna be nice. He has, he has time. Because he 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 has time. He's a professional athlete. We are not. He, has, he takes bus trips and has time to to play his video games on the bus. 
he is a professional athlete. Yeah. That's the time on his hands. All right. We, we love Trevor. Don't, don't ever take that. We love Trevor. Um, oh, yeah. He, and he knows we're going to give him shit, and he's going to give us shit right back. So we're... Uh, I think the only thing left good. is the Frozen Four. Teams remaining, Minnesota, Boston University, uh, Michigan, and Quinnipiac. Boston is the lowest seeded team remaining. And one, two, and three still in play. Minnesota being the number one overall seed. Quinnipiac number two, Michigan three. I wonder what was Boston, like seven, eight, nine, eleven, somewhere in there. Mm. Ten? No, they weren't ten because Western I, was like twelve. I don't, five? I don't remember. Five? Maybe five. No, they couldn't have been five. Could they have? I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. Who cares? Those are the four teams left. It is a yellow and blue matchup between Michigan and Quinnipiac. Did they play each other last year? No, they played. Michigan played. Did they play last year? Mm. Hang on. This is how my brain works. It gets stuck on something, and then I gotta look it up. Um, they uh, did. They did. In the regional final, Michigan With won Michigan seven with... to four. Yeah. Oof. Rough. Rough stuff. So I mean, Quinnipiac might be looking to avenge that loss. I mean, I honestly, I don't care at this point. I don't care about any of these teams. I have a, like, 75% probably, my brain says 75% likely that we're going to get an all Big Ten National Championship rematch of the Big Ten uh, Championship game between Minnesota and Michigan. Really, it's like 50-50 that that could happen. Because they're fifty percent of the field remaining. So anyway, don't don't hurt yourself. I guess technically it's maybe it, twenty five percent chance of that happening. Less is the right number of outcomes. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, they have a twenty five percent chance of that being the outcome. That it could be an all Big Ten national championship game. It's only four I teams. Think- it wasn't that hard to run through. Okay. Yeah, but I could see the smoke coming out of your ears. You can't um, because they're covered, so all the smoke would stay inside. Liar. I, I do think that it is going to be Minnesota, Michigan. As much as I want Quinnipiac to win this, because I don't want to see the Big Ten win, and BU fans, I I just don't like the Hockey East. They I, I just if it makes anybody feel any better, I was notoriously terrible with my picks earlier this year. So, let that be known. That it may very well not be Minnesota and Michigan for the national championship. Could be Boston and Michigan. Could be Quinnipiac and Minnesota. Could be Quinnipiac and Boston. Who knows? I think it's going to be... You know? Those are the all four outcomes. That's why it's 25%. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel like it's going to be Minnesota, Michigan. I think a lot of people think it's going to be Minnesota, Michigan. There are two teams that are stacked. Minnesota has two of the th- three hat trick, Hobie hat trick uh, finalists. The other one's on Michigan. Argue about that if you want to or will. I don't, eh, it's whatever. We, we kind of gave our opinions on the Hobie. Baker Award last week before the hat trick was announced. So, yeah, I, still, I, still how I feel about it. it. It doesn't mean a whole bunch to me. And you, you may say that sour grapes because the player I believe should have been in there and or should have been in the hat trick and potentially should have won the the whole thing is not. So take that as you will. But again, to me, it's not necessarily that big of a. It's not a deal breaker for whether or not I want a guy on my team or any kind of predictor of his success at the next level. So 
cool, to, but... cool, cool to put on the mantle or, you know, hide in the closet under a pile of clothes as I've seen some football players do with their Heismans. So I do think going, going back to the, the actual tournament games, if it is Minnesota, Michigan, um, like every, or most people think it will be, uh, I think it'll be quite the game. Uh, I will probably tune in to watch it. Uh, even though I'm not, I, I don't want either team to win, but I still probably will tune in for whatever the national championship is because these are the four best teams left. And I just, I do hope it's Quinnipiac that ends up raising the trophy at the, at the end of, uh, end of the day even though you know you and i we can't comment other than what we saw during the tournament and with the big 10 in the first round putting up four snowmen that the the, the big 10 the big 10 was the conference this year cool obs just crashed so we'll see if that comes back hopefully it will see what happens here i think it's are we okay i don't Stream looks like it's still up, but I don't. I could change any second here. No, no, no. Hang on. Yeah. It's, Ooh, yeah. It's no, wait. Up. There. Oh no. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe it already reconnected. Oh, yep, yeah, it did. So I don't know how much we lost or what happened. Yeah, it's um, not that important anyway, because we are, I think, at the end. Yeah, we're at the end. Hopefully, it's back up so we can say our goodbyes. We're at that point in the season where there's really going to be not much to talk about current-wise going on, but we will try and fill that gap with some guests. I still have to... I'm really trying to wait until the national tournament stuff is done uh, to reach back out to a couple people. Um, if, they're, if, they're current student, if they're current students, I'm probably going to wait till May to reach back out just because I don't know what the final schedule for athletes is like, if it, how much different it is than, you know, regular students I mean, Colorado, their, their student athletes take one class at a time for like three weeks or four, four weeks or some weird nonsense. Um, so who knows what their classes look like or, or that business, but, uh, we will definitely try and get into the, Get the guest schedule up and going, reaching out to those folks again here soon. And then we might have to wait for some teams to be eliminated from the NHL playoffs to reach out to some others. So we do have quite some some pretty interesting people lined up. And I think those episodes would be really cool if we get to do them. But I think, that, have, I think that's. I think that about, about we do have. Uh, we have quite the array of guests, as as far as different backgrounds and, um. Yep. Their. Their roles within the hockey world, uh, so should and be I, pretty fun. I think honestly, some some pretty good, um, conversations. Based on what I think, we'll talk about with certain guests and questions I already have lined up for certain people. I'm excited about it. I hope some others are and will be more so when they see those announcements for those announcements, make sure you are following the goal horns and fight songs, Twitter handle, which should be scrolling across the bottom of the screen here momentarily. It's been scrolling there all episode. So you know, I just rewind it, pause on it. If you need to, um, also, our personal Twitter handles have been under our pictures this whole episode, so line is there. Michael's is over there under his picture, which is that way, because he's that way. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is right there, down there, all the way down there, scrolling. That's the Twitter. Um, If you think there's something we should talk about, see, hear, you can always... DM us on Twitter, DM us on, or send an email. There's the email address right there, full screen on the bottom, down there. Uh, you could leave a comment if you so wish. 
you know, do those YouTube things like comment, subscribe, or don't. We'll be here anyway. Um, I think that's it. I think that's my spiel. I think you need to become an honorary Minnesotan for how long that took you. I think you should shut up. Um, and that's it. Uh, there's only one thing left to say. Pucks on net, good things happen, like go horns and fight songs. Till the next episode. Have a good one. We're out of here. Enjoy the national title game. Bye.